So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. So Monday ko session nahi ho paaya tha due to certain technical reasons but you guys don't worry. Jab tak main hu tab tak PIB ka koi bhi content aapka nahi chutega. So don't worry about that. In today's class we are going to talk about the PIB news from 3rd to 5th of January 2023. इसके आगे का मैंने इसलिए नहीं लिया बिकॉज इन तीन दो तीन दिनों में ही काफी सारी न्यूज है टू बी कवर्ड और राइट सो ये आज हम कवर कर लेते हैं उसके बाद इन दी कमिंग डेज जो भी आगे के इसके बाद के जो भी डेज है ऑल दो डेज विल बी कवर्ड ओके सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन देर इज अज चांस की यह क्वेश्चन आपके एग्जाम में आने वाला है so union cabinet recently has approved the national green hydrogen mission with initial outlay of this much crore which is 19744 crores to facilitate demand creation production utilization and export of green hydrogen which of the following targets or outcomes it aims to achieve by the year 2030 the question is regarding the targets or the outcomes which this mission uh, wants to achieve uh, which government wants to achieve through this mission by the year 2030. All right. So let's talk about this mission and then we will come back to the question. So the news is that the national green hydrogen mission has been approved by the union cabinet to facilitate demand creation to create uh, the demand among the consumers of the green hydrogen, its production, its utilization and its export. Right. Now you must be wondering green hydrogen kya hota hai? So remember green hydrogen is that hydrogen which is extracted from the electrolysis of water. Right from the uh, electrolysis of water. Now what do you mean by electrolysis? Electrolysis ka matlab hota hai jab, uh, jab uh, water H2O ko jab hum break down karte hai into H2 plus O2. Okay, usko hum bolte hai electrolysis. Right with the help of electricity is be, it is done. With the help of electricity, when H2O is break down into hydrogen and oxygen, this method is known as what electrolysis. This class 9th ka concept. If you don't remember it, there is no issue. Just remember, electrolysis is a method uh, by which uh, the process of breaking down into electrolysis is a method by which this water is break down into hydrogen and oxygen with the help of electricity. So this hydrogen is known as what green hydrogen, right? Now moving ahead, talking about the objectives. So objective is very clear to create the demand creation, to enhance the production, to enhance the utilization and to enhance the export of the green hydrogen. This mission has been approved. The ministry of course will be the ministry of new and renewable energy, which will have, which will have the entire responsibility of uh, formulating the guidelines or, you know, the implementation guidelines for this mission. Okay. Total outlay already we mentioned kar diya hai question mein, that is 19,744 crores and these are the targets which government wants to achieve through this mission. Number one it is, once again, yeah. Number one, development of green hydrogen production capacity. So the government wants to increase the green hydrogen production capacity to 5 MMT which is million metric ton per annum by the year 2030. And associated with this, government wants to increase the renewable energy capacity addition of about 125 gigawatt. All right. Over 8 lakh crore in total investments will be attracted. 6 lakh jobs will be created. And there will be cumulative reduction in fossil fuel imports of over rupees 1 lakh crore. And finally, abatement of nearly five, uh, 50 million metric ton of, ton of annual greenhouse gas emissions. All right, so these are the targets uh, which have been set under this mission. Now talking more about it, so initial outlay 19744 uh, crores and bifurcation is this 1466 crore will be used for the pilot projects, 400 crore will be used for research and development, 388 crore towards other mission components. There will be uh, components of this mission, so uske liye use hoga. and 17490 crore for the site program. So there is a sub program under this national uh, green hydrogen mission, which is site program. So what is site program by the way? Site stands for strategic interventions for green hydrogen transition. Strategic intervention for green hydrogen transition is the full form of site and it is a program to provide financial incentive, right? To provide financial incentive, financial incentive to whom? For targeting domestic manufacturing of electrolysis 
जो इलेक्ट्रोलाइजर्स डोमेस्टिक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग के थ्रू हाइड्रोजन की प्रोडक्शन को बढ़ाएंगे नंबर वन एंड नंबर टू प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन ठीक है ना अंडर द मिशन द रीजन विच आर कैपेबल ऑफ सपोर्टिंग लार्ज स्केल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन और इट्स यूटिलाइजेशन विल बी आइडेंटिफाइड एंड दे विल बी नोन एज ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन हब ठीक है उनको क्या बोला जाएगा ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन हब बोला जाएगा दोज एरिया दोज प्लेसेज दोज रीजन विच आर केपेबल ऑफ प्रोड्यूसिंग ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन इन अ लार्ज क्वॉंटिटी दोज विल बी नोन एज वॉट ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन हब ठीक है एंड दीज आर सम ऑफ द फ्रेमवर्क दैट विल बी डेवलप अंडर दिस मिशन नंबर वन एंड एनेबलिंग फ्रेमवर्क विल बी डेवलप अकॉर्डिंग टू विच दिस दिस मिशन विल वर्क Standards and regulation framework will be developed by the ministry. Public-private partnership framework will be developed for research and development. So, for research and development, the government is also targeting the private sector because their research and development ecosystem is more strengthened than the government sector. Okay, R and D projects they will be there, and coordinated skill development program will also be uh, there under this particular mission. All right. so i hope the national green hydrogen mission is clear isse zyada padhne ki isme zarurat nahi hai this much is enough and now let's identify uh, the targets to develop green hydrogen production capacity of at least 10 mmt is it 10 mmt sabse pehle target tha ye it is not 10 mmt it is 5 mmt right to gain over 8 lakh crore in total investment bilkul sahi baat hai to achieve cumulative reduction in fossil fuel imports over rupees 1 lakh crore this is also correct to abate nearly 50 mmt of annual greenhouse gas emissions absolutely correct and to create over 6 lakh jobs so except one all are correct which means 2 3 4 and 5 option c will be the correct answer let's talk about question number 2 then aur aaj ka session thoda sa lamba hoga to please dhairya banaye rakhe so there is a new scheme bind which is broadcasting infrastructure and network development scheme right broadcasting infrastructure and network development scheme has been recently approved by the cabinet committee on economic affairs you have to identify the incorrect statement about this mission theek hai to let's talk about this scheme it is broadcasting network and infrastructure development scheme so basically as the name says it is something about development of infrastructure of broadcaster and yes that is the objective it is for infrastructure development of public broadcaster that is prasar bharti under which all india radio and doordarshan work theek hai now talking about objective in detail so basically what will happen the prasar bharti will be provided with the financial assistance for expenses related to its expansion and upgradation of its existing broadcasting infrastructure jo bhi uska existing broadcasting infrastructure hai usko update kiya jayega content development and civil work related to the organization the nodal ministry will be of course the ministry of information and broadcasting and the scheme will be central sector scheme which means it will be 100% funded by the government of india with a total outlay of approximately 2540 crores theek okay? hai talking more about its scheme so it will be implemented till financial year 2025 26 and the projects right kon kon se projects honge isme upgrade inka jo existing infrastructure hai usko upgrade kiya jayega इनका जो कंटेंट डेवलपमेंट है उसको अपडेट किया जाएगा जो सिविल वर्क है उस रिलेटेड टू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन उसको वर्क किया जाएगा एंड द फोकस विल बी मोर ऑन रिमोट ट्राइबल लेफ्ट विंग एक्सट्रीमिज्म अफेक्टेड एरियाज बॉर्डर एरियाज एस्पिरेशनल डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स राइट एंड इट विल आल्सो गिव प्रायोरिटी फॉर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हाई क्वालिटी कंटेंट वो मैंने आपको बता दिया दिस विल बी अचीव बाय अपग्रेडिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ डीटीएच प्लेटफॉर्म टू अकोमोडेट मोर चैनल ज्यादा से ज्यादा चैनल देंगे जो कंटेंट होगा वो और बेटर बनेगा ओके okay? now it will enable purchase of outside broadcaster van ob vans and digital upgradation of dd doordarshan and air studios to make them hd ready and also it envisages to uh, you know free distribution of 8 lakh dd free dish set top boxes to the people who are living in remote tribal lw affected areas border areas aspirational districts etc okay so that is about the bind scheme and let's identify the incorrect statement it seeks to provide financial support to prasar bharti for expenses related to expansion and upgradation of its broadcasting infrastructure sahi baat hai no problem it gives special emphasis to remote tribal lwe border areas and aspirational districts ye bhi sahi hai it is a central sector scheme with total outlay of this much crore correct 
इट विल बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड टिल फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी सिक्स ये भी सही है एंड इट एनवाइस इज फ्री डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ ओवर एट लाख डी डी फ्रेडेड ये भी सही है तो ऑल आर करेक्ट बट वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई दी इन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट विच मीन्स नन ऑफ दी अब विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर ऑप्शन ई मूविंग अहेड गाइज टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री वे वॉज दी फर्स्ट एडिशन ऑफ ऑल इंडिया एनुअल स्टेट मिनिस्टर्स कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑर्गेनाइज बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ जल शक्ति हेडेड बाय गजेंद्र सिंह शेखावत विद द थीम वॉटर विजन एट टू थाउजेंड फोर्टी सेवन टू प्रिपेयर अ रोड मैप टू एड्रेस दी वॉटर प्रॉब्लम ऑफ दी कंट्री सो बेसिकली दिस ऑल इंडिया ऑल इंडिया एनुअल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑल इंडिया एनुअल स्टेट मिनिस्टर कॉन्फ्रेंस वॉज इट वॉज द फर्स्ट एडिशन डू रिमेंबर दिस एज वेल This was the first edition of All India Annual State Minister Conference, which was organized by Ministry of Jal Shakti. And where it was organized? It was organized in Bhopal, which is of course in Madhya Pradesh. The objective of organizing this conference was to address the problems related to water in the country. And the theme was Water Vision at 2047. Water Vision at 2047. now these are the detailed objective of this uh, conference that was organized number one is to gather inputs for how we can achieve the vision of india at 2047 and how we can achieve this 5p vision which was announced by the prime minister these are the 5p politic uh, political will public financing partnership public uh, participation and persuasion right then to improve engagement and partnership with the state because water is a, a state subject now what is the meaning of state subject here see there are three list in the constitution of india one is union list one is state list and one is concurrent list right the matters in the union list whatever the matters are there in the union list the the central government has the power to make laws the matters in the state list like water uh, the said state governments have the power to make laws while in the concurrent list both have the power to make laws theek okay? hai so and the third objective is to share the initiatives and schemes of the ministry of jal shakti so the overall objective basically ye sab aapko word to word yaad rakhne ki zarurat nahi hai the overall objective is to you know uh, discuss uh, on how we can address the problems related to water in the country theek hai now iske andar kuch panch thematic sessions hue alag alag number 1 was on water security and water deficit water surplus and hilly regions number 2 was in water use efficiency including reuse of waste water or grey water right the third session was on water governance how we can uh, efficiently strengthen the governance related to water number 4 was on climate change resilience water infrastructure how we can build an infrastructure which is which is resilient to the uh, climate change and finally the quality of water ठीक है सो दीज वर द फाइव थीमेटिक सेशन विच वर कंडक्टेड ड्यूरिंग दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस सो दैट इज ऑल अबाउट दिस एंड वेर इट टूक प्लेस सो इट टूक प्लेस इन भोपाल इन मध्य प्रदेश ऑप्शन ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर चार पे आ जाते हैं लेट्स मूव अहेड टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर इंडिया विच अकाउंटेड फॉर इलेवन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ऑफ टोटल काला आजार और ब्लैक फीवर विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज वॉट ब्लैक फीवर केसेज रिपोर्टेड ग्लोबली इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन Has set target to eliminate kala azar uh, from the country by 2023. Now let's jump to the question directly. Which of the state or states has have achieved their elimination target at the block level? ठीक है कौन से state ने achieve कर लिया है elimination target of kala azar at the block level? So basically there are four endemic states in the country, and out of those four endemic states, two states have achieved this target, right? And it is in news because uh, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. In fact, the Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Mr. Mansook Mandavia, has chaired a meeting, high-level meeting, to review the status of Kala Azar disease in the four endemic states of the country. Which are these four endemic states? These are Bihar, Jharkhand, UP, and West Bengal. Right? Bihar, Jharkhand, UP, and West Bengal. Okay. Now, of course, this was this meeting was uh, uh, conducted to reiterate the commitment of endemic states to work together on how they can eliminate. काला अजर ठीक है नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट काला अजर इन इंडिया सो इंडिया इज कमिटेड टू एलिमिनेट दिस डिजीज बाई दू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री सिक्स थर्टी टू एंडेमिक ब्लॉक्स राइट 
There were 633 endemic blocks in the year 2021. Out of that, 632 endemic blocks have already achieved the elimination status. And what is the elimination status? If there is less than one case per 10,000 population, then it is considered as eliminated, right? So out of 633, 632 may eliminate ho chuka hai and there is only one uh, uh, block jahan pe ye abhi bhi hai, that is Litti Para of Pakur district. Right? There is only one block which is named as what? Litti Para of Pakur district of Jharkhand which is uh, currently in the endemic category or jo ki bahut zyada pe prevalent nahi hai cases only 1.23 cases are there per 10,000 population. So I hope 1-2 uh, mahine, 3 mahine ke andar this block will also be out of the endemic category. Okay? Now, globally, if we talk about 90% of the global cases of Kala Azar in the year 2021 were from 8 countries which are Brazil, Eritrea, Ethiopia, India, Kenya, Somalia, South Sudan and Sudan. And India accounted for 11.5% of the total cases of Kala Azar globally in the year 2021. Okay? And as I already told you, 633 blocks there of 54 districts from these four states only, which were in the endemic category. And out of 633, Kalas are endemic blocks. Those are 625 blocks, jo the wo, uh, out of the endemic category. Ho gaye the. And now, 632, as of today, 632 categories are out of endemic category. And only one Litti Para block of Pago district of Jharkhand is in the endemic category. Okay? And currently more than 90% of Kalazar cases in India are contributed by Bihar and Jharkhand and Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal are the two states which have achieved their elimination target at the block level. Okay, and that is the question. Okay, so the two states are Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal which means 3 and 4 option C will be the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number 4. Question number... Uh, Question of, it's, it should be question number 4 or 5. One second. Yeah. It should be question number 5. So, where has NTPC Limited commissioned India's first green hydrogen blending project? Right. This is India's first green hydrogen blending project in the piped natural gas network. So, basically hydrogen and natural gas is blended in this project. Okay. And it is India's first. So, that is it. So, that's why it is important. So it has been uh, initiated, designed, it has been installed by which company? It is NTPC Limited. Do remember uh, the name of the company. It has commissioned India's first green hydrogen blending project in piped natural gas. Right? Natural gas, the pipe natural gas, it has blend kar diya hai hydrogen ko of NTPC Kawas Township, which is in Surat. Right? It is a joint effort of NTPC and Gujarat Gas Limited. Because of course, Surat is in Gujarat. It will supply... H2NG, NG signs for what? Natural gas to households of Kavas township, uh, township at Aditya Nagar, which is in Surat, right? And green hydrogen, of course, at this facility will be produced by electrolysis of water from already installed one megawatt floating solar project. So there is a one megawatt solar floating project. Usse power derived karke, the electrolysis will be done. Okay, so pura ka pura ye kya hoga? Renewable energy ke upar kaam karega. So, where this has been commissioned, so it has been commissioned in Surat, option C is the correct answer. I hope this is clear. Now, let me ask you a question here. Can you tell me uh, the major constituent of natural gas? Which gas is the major constituent of natural gas? Write down in the comment section. Let's see who can answer it. Question number 6, pe ajate, very important question. Vinay Prakash Singh has been appointed as the Secretary General of Asian Pacific Postal Union. And this is for the very first time that has that an Indian has been appointed to this post. The question is identify incorrect statement about the Asian Pacific Postal Union. So let's talk about it. So news yaad rakhna, naam yaad rakhna, Vinay Prakash Singh. Right? Vinay Prakash Singh is the first Indian to be appointed as the Secretary General of Asian Pacific Postal Union. Right? And the tenure will be four years. The tenure of Mr. Singh will be four years. Okay. Now let's talk about this union, Asian Pacific Postal Union. So basically, as the name says, the objective is to extend, facilitate, and improve. Extend, facilitate, and improve the relations 
among the member countries of this union right and to promote cooperation in the field of postal services it was established in the year 1982 the same year in which nabad was formed uh, with its headquarters at bangkok right and it is an intergovernmental organization with current number of members 32 there are 32 members in this organization and remember one thing its membership is restricted to only members of universal postal union in the region which is specialized agency of united nation theek hai jo ki ek specialized agency hai united nation ki to jo member universal postal union ke members honge सिर्फ वही एशियन पैसिफिक पोस्टल यूनियन के मेंबर बन सकते हैं इन द एशियन पैसिफिक रीजन ठीक है नाउ टॉकिंग मोर अबाउट इट इट इंश्योर्स दैट ऑल टेक्निकल एंड ऑपरेशनल प्रोजेक्ट्स ऑफ यूनिवर्सल पोस्टल यूनियन प्लीज डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज यूनिवर्सल पोस्टल यूनियन इज द स्पेशलाइज्ड एजेंसी ऑफ यूनाइटेड नेशन तो ऑल द टेक्निकल एंड ऑपरेशनल प्रोजेक्ट्स ऑफ यूपीयू आर फुलफिल्ड इन द रीजन सो दैट द रीजन इज इंटीग्रेटेड इन टू द ग्लोबल पोस्टल नेटवर्क इन द बेस्ट पॉसिबल वे हेड हमने पहले डिस्कस कर लिया सेक्रेटरी जनरल हु इज ऑल्सो द डायरेक्टर ऑफ एशियन पैसेफिक पोस्टल कॉलेज जो कि लार्जेस्ट इंटरल गवर्नमेंटल पोस्टिंग ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट है इन द एशिया पैसेफिक रीजन ठीक है तो जो सेक्रेटरी जनरल होते हैं एपीपीयू के ही और शी इज ऑल्सो द डायरेक्टर ऑफ द एशियन पैसेफिक पोस्टल कॉलेज जो कि सबसे बड़ा पोस्टल ट्रेनिंग सेंटर है इन द Asia Pacific region. All right. And now let's identify the incorrect statement about APU, which is of course Asian Pacific Postal Union. So it is an intergovernmental organization of 32 member countries of Asia Pacific region. सही बात है. It was founded in 1992, headquarters in Bangkok. Its membership is open to all countries. No, it is restricted to the members of UPU, which is Universal Postal Union. Which is a specialized agency of United Nations. ठीक है, so B will be the correct answer. Option D because we have to identify what the incorrect statement. ठीक है जी. Question number seven पे आ जाते हैं. Which ministry or ministries have as has have exchanged the MOUs or agreements with all the three services to facilitate continued education of Agni Veers while serving in the armed forces and award them appropriate skill certificates. in accordance with their expertise so the ministry of defense ministry of education and ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship along with all the three services have signed agreements or mous to facilitate the education of agni veers while they serve in the armed forces jab wo armed forces mein kaam karte rahenge to unke education ko facilitate karne ke liye this mou this agreements these mous these agreements have been signed right now what will happen is that nios which is national institute of open school and ignu indira gandhi national open university will award suitable 12th class certificates and graduation certificates to the ignivis respectively which means nios will award the 12th class certificates and ignu will award the uh, graduation certificate or bachelor's degree to the ignivis job roles or skill sets of ignivis will be identified during their service and they will be provided with a skill certificate as uh, as per the national occupational standards theek hai and this will be done in coordination with national skill development corporation and sector skill councils all right now based on these qualification they will be uh, you know uh, they will be provided with a partial praman patra right at the time of their exit from the armed forces and with this they will be market ready and industry accepted theek hai in addition dgt under ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship will also award the national trade certificate to the agni veers all right i hope this is clear so now let's come back to the question so which ministries are these uh which ministry has a with all the three services so these are defense education mosde which means option e will be the correct answer e b uh, a b and c moving ahead to question number 8 which is about pradhan mantri bharatiya jan aushadhi pariyojana and you have to identify correct statement about this scheme now you must be wondering why we are discussing about it scheme the scheme was launched way back in the year 2008 so why we are discussing about it so we are discussing about it because 
a new product which is named as Jan Oshdi Special Chavan Prash has been recently launched under this scheme. And that is why this scheme is in news. Jan Oshdi Special Chavan Prash. However, this information is not that important, but yes, right. Now let's talk about this scheme. Pradhan Mantri Jan Oshdi Pariyojana. So the objective of this scheme is to uh, make available the quality generic medicine at affordable prices to all. Right. So basically, the objective of this scheme is that the generic medicines are available affordable prices pe avail karana to the general public. It was launched in the year 2008 by Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers, which is currently headed by Mr. Mansukh Mandavia. The implementing agency for this scheme is Pharmaceutical and Medical Devices Bureau of India. Under it, what happens is that uh, these medicines are available where? From where? Uh, the person, the citizen can buy the medicine. So he can buy the medicine from Jan Oshdi Kendras, which are being established under this scheme, right? Currently, more than 9,000 Kendras are operational in the country and the target is to establish 10,000 such Kendras by the year 2024, by March 2024 and 10,500 by March 2025. And we will definitely achieve this target. Uh, jaldi hum isko, pehle hi isko achieve kar lenge. Okay. Now to open these Kendras, the incentive of rupees 5 lakh is provided to the owner and special incentives of up to rupees 2 lakh is provided for various special categories like women, SCST, hill districts, island districts and northeastern districts. Right. There are four warehouses uh, which have been uh, established by PMDI which are located at Gurugram, Chennai, Guwahati and Surat. And now talking about the uh, how many medicines are there uh, available, how many medicines are available at the Kendra. So 1759 drugs and 280 surgical items are available uh, at these Kendras and also Suvida sanitary pads are available with a cost of just rupees one per pack. Okay? And prices of these uh, medicines are generally 50% to 90% lower than the market price. Okay, and that is why, that is how the government is ensuring the uh, availability of affordable generic medicines for all. Okay. So that is all about this scheme. And now let's come back to the question. You have to identify correct statement. It was launched in 2014. No, those are art. It is implemented by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. No, Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizer. Under it, the government has set a target to open 15,000 Janoshdi Kendras. No. 10,000 by March 2024, 10,500 by March 2025. Pharmaceutical and Medical Devices Bureau of India is the nodal implementing agency. Ye baat bilkul sahi hai. And it, it provides incentive of rupees 5 lakh and special. Ye bhi sahi hai. To do correct aage bhai. To ye galat ho gaya thoda sa. Thik hai. To I will make the correction. Hame ek hi correct statement hona chahiye tha. Isme to D to correct hai hi. E bhi correct hai yaha pe. To isko mein values ko change kar dunga PDF mein. To in that case it will be. Uh, incorrect statement. So option D will be the correct answer guys. Okay, let's say this is 10 lakh. Let's say this is uh, 3 lakh. Okay, so in that case this statement E will be incorrect. Okay, so option D is the correct answer. Question number 9. Pe jate hai. Indian Railways Varanasi Kant Railway Station has been recently awarded with a 5 star e drive station certification. You have to identify the correct statement about this certification correct statement aapko batana hai about this certification so the news is that the varanasi kant railway station has been awarded a five star e right station certification by fssai which is food safety and standards authority of india right and of course this has been awarded for providing high quality and nutrition nutritious food to the passengers and the very first station to have such certification was mumbai central in of course Mumbai. Now talking about eat right station, so it is awarded by FSSAI as part of uh, the eat right movement of FSSAI to those railway stations which have set benchmarks in providing safe and wholesome food and nutritious food to its passengers. The station is awarded with certificates with ratings from 1 to 5. 5 is the best, right? 5 is the best. 5 star rating indicates full compliance by the station to ensure safe, hygienic and nutritious food for its passengers. Okay. 
and till now these stations have got these certification anand vihar in delhi chhatrapati shivaji terminus mumbai mumbai central vadodara uh, chandigarh railway station and bhopal railway station theek okay, hai now varanasi cat so let's identify the correct statement about this certification it is awarded by irctc no it is awarded by what fssai so this is incorrect it is given to railway station that set benchmarks in providing safe and wholesome food to passengers sahi baat hai it is awarded within ratings 1 to 5 correct and varanasi kant railway station is the first to receive this certification kya ye baat sahi hai of course not to correct nikalne hame 2 and 3 option b 2 and 3 only will be the correct answer i hope guys you guys are not getting bored i can understand thoda sa lamba hai session but yes अब मैं क्या कर सकता हूं भाई आपको पढ़ना तो पड़ेगा ही सो प्लीज थोड़ा सा धैर्य बना के रखें कोई बात नहीं ब्रेक ले सकते हो आप बीच में इसीलिए रिकॉर्डेड है तो आपका ज्यादा टाइम भी वेस्ट नहीं होगा थोड़ा सा ब्रेक ले सकते हो बट ठीक है देख सकते हैं इतना तो वे वॉज क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन वे वॉज द इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन फूड एंड न्यूट्रिशनल सिक्योरिटी विच इन शॉर्ट इज आई फैंस टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री वॉज हेल्ड टू ब्रेन द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ जीनोम एडिटिंग to enhance the country's food and nutritional security right so this i fans 2023 took place at national agri food biotech institute national agri food biotechnology institute which is located in mohali and where is mohali batao punjab mein hai the objective is to brainstorm the importance of uh, genome editing jo question mein mention tha to enhance the country's food and nutritional security under the uh, under the uh, clouds of the climate change right the organizers were these four national agri food biotech institute nabi center for innovative and applied bioprocessing national institute of plant biotechnology and international center for genetic engineering and biotechnology all right now during this event a national genome editing and training center was also launched theek hai this is important National Genome Editing and Training Center was launched in the campus only, which will be a state-of-the-art facility, which will serve as a national platform to cater the uh, needs to cater the needs to adapt different genome editing methods. ठीक है, genome editing methods को adapt करने के लिए और उसपे research करने के लिए this training center will work. ठीक है? So where it took place? It took place in Mohali, which is in Punjab. All right. क्वेश्चन नंबर 11 पे आ जाते हैं हाउ मच आउटले हैज बीन रिसेंटली अप्रूव बाय यूनियन कैबिनेट फॉर कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ स्कीम्स ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ डेवलपमेंट ऑफ नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न रीजन व्हिच इज हेडेड बाय मिस्टर जी किशन रेड्डी जी के रेड्डी एंड जी के रेड्डी इज आल्सो द मिनिस्टर ऑफ टूरिज्म एंड कल्चर सो फॉर द बैलेंस पीरियड ऑफ दिस तो सो यू हैव टू टेल द आउटले ठीक है द यूनियन कैबिनेट हैज एक्सटेंडेड द स्कीम्स Three major schemes of uh, Ministry of Development of North Eastern Region with a total outlay of twelve double eight two point two crores. Okay, so approximately twelve double eight two crores. Okay, and this has been done for the balance period of the uh, financial year that is from financial year twenty twenty three twenty twenty two twenty three to financial year two thousand twenty six. Okay, now three schemes. I have told you, which have continued. Number one is North East Special Infrastructure Scheme. Uh, under which the ministry is developing special infrastructure in the north eastern region it is a central sector scheme with 100% central funding right and it has two component number one is for construction of road number two is for construction of other infrastructure other than roads theek hai so it has been restructured with two components one is for roads and one is for other than roads infrastructure all right now second one is scheme of north east council so all the schemes of north east council uh, has been continued iski detail mein hum nahi jayenge because wo thodi si ajeeb si schemes hai so that is uh, those schemes are not important so 3202.7 crore for the schemes of north eastern council has been provided for uh, its continuation and there is a special package for assam worth 1540 crores theek hai 1540 करोड़ रुपए स्पेशल पैकेज दिया गया है असम को फॉर बोडो लैंड टेरिटोरियल काउंसिल फॉर दीमा आसा ऑटोनॉमस टेरिटोरियल काउंसिल एंड फॉर कार्बी अंगलोंग ऑटोनॉमस टेरिटोरियल काउंसिल ओके 
I hope guys you understood it. And now let's come back to the question. So how much is the outlay? It is 12882 crores. Option C is the correct answer. And now let's move ahead to the questions in short, which do not need any much explanation. But before that, if you want to have the PDF of this session, you can join the Telegram channel. The link is provided in the description. And if you want to ask anything related to examination, you can follow me here. So now let's talk about question number 12. Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has recently approved the investment of this much crore for 382 megawatt Sunni Dam hydroelectric project on Satluj River. I hope you can easily answer this question. The question is about the state or UT, where this state, uh, where this project is located. So it is located in Himachal Pradesh. Option C is the correct answer. Question 13, government has approved the special interest free loan of 10,000 to FCV tobacco farmers to overcome the damage caused by Mandu's cyclonic rains. So I hope you have heard about this cyclone, uh, Mandu's. This loan will be administered by tobacco board. Under which ministry this tobacco board works? Very easy question. It works under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, headed by, headed by, come on, tell me, headed by Piyush Goyal, right? Question number 14, National Workshop on Project Driven Block Panchayat Development Plan and District Panchayat Development Plan was recently held in New Delhi. Which article of the Constitution of India mandates panchayats to prepare and implement plan for economic development and social justice? Now, uh, since we are talking about the Panchayat Development Plan, which is uh, the topic of local governance, so it can be asked in an examination. So it is article 243G of the constitution of India. Option D is the correct answer. And guys, the last question for today with which international organization central government has recently signed loan agreements for these four purposes, right? Connecting economic clusters for inclusive growth in Maharashtra project, uh, $350 million, Assam South Asia sub-regional economic cooperation corridor connectivity improvement project, $300 million. Now I have identified this bank. Aapne kiya kya? Yes, it is Asian Development Bank, which is headquartered in Manila in Philippines and headed by Masat Sugu Asakawa. All right. So that's it for today's class, guys. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. And I will see you in the next session on Friday, where we'll we cover uh, uh, the PIB news from the upcoming days. All right. So thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Take care and God bless.